I actually had my first uh, studio session when I was four years old. My dad has everything archived somewhere. Like, I haven't even like went back to listen to anything, but it would be a trip to. I'm Seven Thomas, you know, uh, music producer, artist, songwriter. Seven Thomas, I was born on July 7th, 1991. Seven was always my favorite number. It has a, a significance in many things like the seven deadly sins and the seven seas. And I just wanted to embody the, the good luck behind that, that, that number. And it's my entire being. This year was just different for me. I was just a lot more inspired and I felt a, a fire was lit under me. And I said, you know what? Like I want to change my surroundings. I want to guarantee and edge my spot in uh, history, you know, so I just went triple hard. And um, I feel like I've, I've grown also as an artist and as a producer. I was in a better mental space, period, you know what I mean? So I, I guess that reflected in the music and, you know, the stuff that I was making ended up resonating with, you know, the artist that it was being sent to, so. You know, my father and my mother, um, they were just lovers of music and like collectors of music, collecting vinyl. And it's like a huge thing in Jamaican culture to have like a sound system or be familiar with sound systems, like huge ass speaker monitors like over your head. And I would always just, just venture off downstairs, grab the mic and like sing along to songs. I actually had my first uh, studio session when I was four years old. My uncle, he's a dancehall DJ rapper, Robert. He actually took me to the studio for the first time. It was UB40 studio. I literally like freestyled two songs back to back while my dad was like writing the lyrics out. You know what I mean? But I was like a conscious like artist. When I was 10, I had my first national hit in, in Canada. It was called Too Young For Love. I was using the most reggae name ever, Sugar Prince. <laughs> <laughs> when I was like around 12, 13, um, I did a deal with Sony. My manager was reaching out to the youth in the communities. He had come up to me and he's like, yo, I want to introduce you to Matthew, who was Boy Wanda. I guess he had a bunch of beats playing. I was just like blown away by it because I didn't understand how he could achieve such quality. You know what I mean? So it blew my mind. And it, it, it was crazy because we actually already had a beat culture in the city with uh, Battle of the Beat Makers. All of us would aspire to compete someday. You know what I mean? I participated in 2012. You go first. All right, Seven Thomas, let me see what you got, man. 45 seconds, let me see. I had an epic showdown with Wonder Girl. I think we went three rounds. She ended up winning the whole thing. You know what I mean? Shout out to Wonder Girl. My name was ringing bells after the battle, you know what I mean? A lot of people were tweeting about it and reaching out and Wonder reached back out to me and he's like, yo, like, I heard you killed it. And then probably a week later, like, I went to his house. And so when we get in the studio, it's like one of us will start something and then the other will finish and then we just go back and forth. It reflects in the music, though, at the end of the day that, you know, we're on the same page and we're on the same wave. We're really drum guys in a sense, like, we really love, like, to, to make shit knock. Drake is very private. He's one of those guys that just likes to have stuff sent to him in volume. He just take it and go do his thing. But he's definitely one of my favorite people to, to work with, period, because his emotional intelligence and the way how he translates that in, in writing is, honestly, I can only put someone like Frank Ocean in that conversation. I just always have like the most grand expectation when it comes to working with Drake. Whenever I hear a verse back, I'm like, fuck, like, yes, that's exactly what I wanted. Rex was in the studio with Mac and um, I guess Rex was uh, talking about me to Mac and telling him about my production and stuff like that. Mac had, had told him to invite me to the studio. I pulled up at around like 2, 3 a.m. Mac was in there smoking a cigarette and I think he was like drinking like whiskey or something or a beer I can't remember but he was very cool you know what I mean he embraced me and we were just like in there just chilling vibing and I, uh, he asked me to play him some stuff so I was just going through a laundry list of beats and uh, he picked the one uh, on his album you can when I heard the record I was like he took it to a different place like they actually 
um, added a few things to it. I'm trying to actually think about the track, but I, I, I'm so distracted by the thought of how amazing of an artist he was, you know what I mean? And, and all the people he's touched with his music, you know what I mean? So R.I.P. Mac. The beat was created at a studio session um, in LA. It was me, Wanda, Jahan, and, and Vori. We were just all vibing in the studio and Jahan just started playing that. And then Wanda just started like doing the bass line and then I came in and did my modification of the bass line, added a few sounds. I didn't even know that was gonna be a Beyonce song until probably a week before it dropped or something like that. Jay-Z and Beyonce, I don't know. Like it's it's surreal still, you know, to even acknowledge that and have that be a reality. Like sometimes I'll be waking up like, wow, like I, I can't believe this is my life. Like I'm able to do what I love at such a high level. It's the most like sobering thing in a way, which, which is weird because like usually you'd be getting a high, but I feel like I've been able to work with my entire list of everyone I ever wanted to work with, like from starting from the top of my list, which was crazy for me because like I, I never really imagined myself becoming a producer anyway, you know what I mean? Wake Up was something I worked on a year prior. Wallace Lane, they're, they're like, you know, my bros, man. Um, they actually sent me a huge pack of samples and, and just stuff to, to vibe to, you know, like, startups and, and, and uh, melodies. And it just inspires a, a whole idea or like, you know, it's, it's a reinterpretation of, of what they imagined. And then, you know, I get to bring it into my world and, and you know, do my thing with it. That one stood out to me. And it's ironic that, you know, the theme of Travis's album is like a theme park or like a circus or something like that, because that's exactly what I imagined when I was making a beat. I'm like, this sounds like a dark, twisted, like circus, you know, with scary clowns and shit. I was just messing around with it and letting it loop over and over again, walking around, smoking. I like to meditate and live with it for a little bit before I start adding drums to it. So I was just hearing a bunch of stuff in my head and I piece it together and um, sent it out. I just had a good feeling about it, period. And then I heard that Abel had cut something on it. They didn't change anything at all. It's pretty much the same sequence that I have in my laptop is the same thing that was released. It's one of my favorite records from the album, period. So yeah, I'm, I'm super proud of it. I feel like it's a timepiece every time I do something, you know what I mean? Or when anybody produces something, it's like a moment in time and I can capture that moment and then pass it on to somebody else. They can interpret it and make it their own thing. Like I haven't even ever been in the studio with Travis Scott and we have all these records together. Unspoken language I'm, I'm talking about, you know, being on the same wave. Rex was just playing me a bunch of stuff that he made like the same day. We absolutely work like madmen, you know what I mean? We'd be up till like 12 p.m. the next day just like making shit. I'm an experimenter, like, so I was just playing it backwards and just messing around with it, manipulating the sounds and stuff. Started adding drums to it and it just turned into a bop, you know what I mean? Don't be goofy, bring some passion to the table, what you doing? It just happened so fast. That was one of those beats that you could, that I made in like five, 10 minutes. Um, that was one of the things I adopted from Wanda for sure. Not to overproduce and allowing the artist to be the main instrument. I have that mentality with, with everything I work on and with everyone I work with, I want their, their voice to be at the forefront of, of the production. I'm super excited because it's such an honor and a privilege to be a part of the Carter series, you know, such a heralded series. It's kind of like a coming out party in a sense because, you know, it's it's his uh, album after Cash Money and uh, it's, it's a symbolic period in time. You know, people are always gonna be able to look back at this moment in particular and be like, yo, this was Wayne's album, like after Cash Money, you know, throughout that whole turmoil. It's a definitive album. 
So it means a lot to me to be a part of it. It's gonna be a wave for sure, and I think that you know the production on it as well is, is gonna help change the landscape of, of, of productions as well. It's just one of those pockets that are just different. Like the beat is crazy, I know that for a fact, cause I ain't sending out no trash to nobody. Yeah, I made the beat a month or two ago. I was listening to a lot of DMX for some reason. I was like, yo, I wanted to bring back the feel of this one track called uh, Let Me Fly. I just kind of stole the pocket from that a little bit and, and reinterpreted it and, and made it my own. I really wanted to harness the energy of that record specifically. Every beat I make is a blank canvas. Like I've never like just had a, a, a drum pattern laid out and just switched out the melody and you know what I mean? What many people point out and what many people highlight is my drum work. I just think my style is different because you know, my, my dance hall background, you know, has influenced like my pocket. You know, I, I have an outside the box approach when I'm creating my, my, my bounces, you know what I mean? And I think that's uh, like a nod to Timbaland. I think Timbaland is really like the bounce god. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm just different because, you know, I got that slap, like my shit, I make sure my shit slaps harder than anybody else's. So, you know what I mean? 2019 is, is, is gonna be an interesting year. You know, closing out this year, we got a couple records, a couple more records coming out that um, I can't get into the specifics of, but I think that it, it'll elevate the entire Seven Thomas brand and, you know, the trajectory. And I think we're going to come into the, the new year with a, with a bang. I'm really doing everything I can to stay on the front of everybody's minds. And I want to be everyone's favorite producer. That's my goal right now.